Good morning. Tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning. Today we're going to talk about preparing for these Arctic blasts when it gets really cold in your area. Uh, first off, if you're in Montana or South Dakota or somewhere, this is nothing to you and you probably won't get any benefit out of this video. <laughs> but if you're like us, we're in Virginia, so if you're in the mid-Atlantic states uh, or places where you just don't get much cold weather or especially teens or single digits, this may be helpful for you. We're gonna show you what we do with our cattle. Uh, we're gonna address our layer birds. Uh, this time of year, we don't actually have any pigs on farm right now, so that's a good thing. And I do have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ash, our barn cat, who keeps our food safe, but apparently needs some cuddles right now. So what we're talking about today is basic. Um, fill up your generators, get them close to the house, get them close to the freezers, that sort of thing. We're going to prep our horses, meaning 24-7 forage for them. We'll blanket, even though they have stalls, and we'll just go through some of the basics that we do to try to keep our animals safe and warm. Yeah, so we're going to get to it. Let's go. Having extra straw is another great thing to have when temperatures are getting cold. We put straw in for our dogs that guard our chickens. We put straw in for our sheep uh, and the donkey in their little shelter. And typically if we had pigs this time of year, we would put straw in with them as well. And it's just something that can really come in handy when you're expecting wet weather with winds. Uh, even if you put down straw beforehand, that straw can get wet. So just a good thing to have on hand, a couple bales, doesn't cost that much and can really make a difference to your livestock if conditions get bad. tend to just unwrap the bales manually as I find a lot of times when I cut across the bale to get the twine off, big chunks just fall to the ground and then it makes it harder to get it off. So we found it's just easier just to unwind it. All right guys, so we just gave the cows some feed, uh, gave them hay, they're good. We may give them another bale later today. Um, when it gets really cold like this, they tend to burn more calories keeping warm. So we wanna make sure that they have enough hay and feed to meet their metabolic demand and keep them happy. We're gonna do chickens now. Um, we're gonna feed them a little extra as well. Everybody gets extra treats this time, this time of year. Um, so we'll go see them, get eggs, and uh, make sure they're all set for one or two. All right, another thing for being prepared for winter on the farm is these hydrants are amazing. Uh, the water is underground, therefore it doesn't freeze. So as long as you don't have a hose or something connected that's gonna block this up and allow it to drain like it needs to, these are great for in the winter. Uh, most farms, homesteads, you probably have some kind of automatic watering system or something to get water to your animals. Uh, other than the in-ground waters we have for the cattle, these are pretty much what we use during the really cold times because water comes out whether it's nine degrees or, or 20 degrees and we just have to fill buckets so it's more work than our normal systems but um, ensuring that your animals have water is super important so that's why you want to make sure you have a way of getting water if it's not hydrants whether you're getting it from inside your house uh, but have a way to get water to your animals because just know if you're using lines and hoses and stuff outside and it gets really cold they're going to freeze and not work <music> We have about 175 chickens. They usually go through about 50 pounds of feed per day. On cold days, we like to make sure they've got a little extra. So today, 
with you. Give them 75 pounds. Just make sure nobody's short. We do that for everybody. Everybody gets extra feed on snow days. As you can see here, Greta has a big triangle collar around her neck, and that is because she has been getting out again. Occasionally, she'll go good for a number of weeks, and then she'll get in the habit of just sliding under the fence, and their coats are so thick that the electric doesn't even touch them. So we end up having to put her collar back on. We usually keep it on for a week or two, and then we take it back off, and she's good to go again for another month or two. Unless there's fireworks or gun shooting nearby. Um, something to know about if you get dogs for guarding your chickens is that they hate fireworks. And, and gunshots, so um, they tend to get out and they always come back, but um, just something to be aware of. All right, let's go do these chickens. We have two covered feeders and a split PVC feeder. They really seem to enjoy the open PVC feeders for whatever reason, but the covered feeders are wonderful. But they <laughs> pull 30, 40 pounds. They keep it dry. Been a bit of a game changer for us. Measuring out and scooping out food every day was not working. Uh, this is a preventative thing we do uh, every couple months. We use DE on our feed anyways. Uh, we'll sprinkle it in dry with their feed. But also, this is something that we read on the American Pastured Poultry Producers Association. And that is to mix milk and diametaceous earth into a thick slurry that you can pour on the food. And this helps the chicks to eat it more, to get more into their system, um, to help with parasite control. Uh, and just good for their digestive system. You can see we, we made a little bit of a mess with it. <laughs> this is our special mixing utensil <laughs> that we found in the past year. Sometimes you gotta use what you got. And so, as you can see, this just makes, we're just using buttermilk and diametaceous earth. And that's it. So supernatural, really no chemicals. I think it's even organic buttermilk. We're going for it. Look good? You want some? <laughs> Greta <laughs> wants to check it out. So as you can see, we've just got kind of a, just a pasty slurry. And we will just spread this out on their feed. And like I say, good for their digestive system. And helps to ensure a lot of times when you do diametaceous earth dry it's just so powdery that it'll fall to the bottom and a lot of it they never actually get and so for that reason that's why we mix it into this slurry to try to help make sure they're getting more in their system And 
good once we've got it all over their food. We'll put it right on the ground and just let them eat out of the bolsa. Now Lexi just putting out some more oyster shell. Gives them a lot of calcium so they can produce good eggs. They use up a lot of calcium just making the shell, so this helps replace that. We give it free choice so they can eat it as they need it. You can see more if you watch the video up here in the corner. Uh, we did a whole video on how to raise layer chickens for hobby or for profit. So it's about 30 minutes long, kind of goes from start to finish on how to raise layers on pasture. All right, and then another thing we do occasionally is add some apple cider vinegar to their water. Uh, typically we use with the mother. Um, right now this is just all we have on hand, so it doesn't hurt and it helps their digestive system. getting eggs and this is something that on really cold days you have to do maybe two or three times a day uh, eggs will freeze and crack they do make heated pads but we're not going that far into it and we're here enough that we can do it a couple times a day to make sure they don't freeze so temperature typically when temperatures are below 25 we're out here a couple times a day getting eggs if you can Afford them for your farm. We found these rollaway boxes will pay for themselves uh, in the time and labor it takes from cleaning eggs. The eggs are just so much cleaner when they come out. They roll away from the chickens and we're able to just gather them and a lot of them can go straight into the carton. Don't even need washing. Just something to think about uh, if you're doing chicks on any, chickens on any scale. Egg washing can become a very time intensive chore if you start getting a lot of birds. And like I say, this will pay for itself in the labor in the time that you don't have to wash eggs. should probably mention that we are still getting an absolute ton of eggs from our girls and that is because this is their first laying season all of our gals are probably eight nine months old right now um, they have not gone through a molt they have not slowed down producing so we are very fortunate to be giving these kinds of eggs mid-January um, next year it will not be so plentiful and honestly that kind of works well when we don't have a farmers market but um, the girls will just keep on laying we try to keep them as comfortable as possible but we don't add any sort of artificial light to try to extend the daylight hours to keep them laying this is just what they do because this is their first year and they are a little overzealous so this is our chicken house. We've went over that in one of our other videos. And what we do to keep our chickens warm, instead of putting them in a greenhouse, is we keep our mobile mobile so we can keep moving them around pasture. But then we've also got lights up in the top, heat lamps basically, same ones we used to when our brooding chicks. And we cut those on and that helps to keep them warm. Otherwise, most of the walls are solid. Uh, there is a narrow area for some venting because you wanna let gas escape and have good ventilation in. But other than that, we found that these heat lamps, we've been doing this for years, works great. We've done it in single t single digit temperatures and the birds do great with it. So uh, sometimes right now I've got two lights. I'm probably gonna go ahead and add probably two more just to make sure that they're good and toasty. Uh, we don't shut our door at night. So if it does get too toasty in here, or they don't like it. Obviously they can go out when they want. They're within a fence and then there's dogs around this perimeter. So for that reason, we don't shut our chickens in at night. They come and go as they please. And yeah, so that's just another thing during winter cold temperatures you can do to help keep your chickens warm is just add some heat lamps into whatever structure they're in. Uh, one word of caution, make sure they're secure. We actually put zip ties and stuff around where it connects just to make sure if it was to fall that it would be caught like a secondary preventative measure from it hitting the ground. Um, these can cause fires, so you have to just be very careful. So add some extra zip tie, tie it around or something just to make sure it's good and secure. All right. Now let's go do the horses. It's January. We still have our chickens out on pasture. Their mobile house is right here behind me and we move that around as need be. A little more frequent in the winter because the grass isn't growing, but uh, it's mid-January and they still have all this pasture and grass. So it helps keep them healthy and spreading that good manure around so that when spring comes, the pastures thrive. So here's the feeder I showed you a little bit ago. And as you can see, they have eaten it all. And the bowl we left down 
they have about cleaned that out as well. Another thing that's really handy to have is a generator. Uh, this is a 9,000 starting watts, 7,000 running watts generator. I've typically been able to run up to five chest freezers off of this one generator. Um, we paid a bit as this was about a thousand dollars when we bought it, so it was quite an investment. But you know, if you're especially doing livestock and you've got freezers full of meat, you have to have a way to keep those freezers going if you lose power. Now, sometimes when you lose power, it's cold, so that definitely helps but you'll have many more thousands of dollars likely in your freezers that you could lose. So for this reason, we have this generator and then I have another smaller generator and power has went out before and generally what we'll do is we'll get this guy running and we'll plug in about four freezers at a time. We'll run those for three or so hours. Then we'll switch to four other freezers, run those for about three hours and just keep rotating as need be until the power comes back on. Now, fortunately we haven't had to do this more than a day or so, but still it's one of those things that you don't want to be caught, especially if you're selling meat as a business or you're saving meat for your homestead. You've just got a lot stored up. You don't want to lose that. And while this is an expensive purchase, it's great in that it can save you a lot of money down the road. Also, this can not only be used for meat, but you can power your house, you can cut your TV on, radios, if you got portable heaters. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with a generator. So just something to have on your farm or homestead, uh, just in case. Uh, it's one of those things that it's not if it's gonna happen, it's when it's gonna happen. So, all right. horses here. Sugar's 20, Ace is 17, going on 18. We feed Purina senior pellets just in the winter time. They're actually pretty easy keepers. They stay in great, great shape. Um, so they've got round bales out 24 seven. They'll get their two scoops of senior feed morning and sometimes night if it's going to be real cold. feeders um, I can take them in I can take them out and clean them easily um, but it also keeps them eating off of the ground which is anatomically correct for them being grazing animals so it helps with digestion blanketing um, our horses obviously have wonderful stalls they can stay dry their water is in here food is in here everything they need but sometimes they insist on standing out in freezing rain. So we still blanket, especially if it's in the teens and there's any sort of moisture involved. Um, so we'll go ahead and get them covered knowing that the next few days are going to be teens, sometimes even single digits with snow and or rain. So when we blanket, the, um, they're obviously used to it. They're old, they put up with a lot. Um, but we try to make sure that we are fitting it on them when they're in a happy place. They hold still for everything, which is lovely. And we also make sure all the clips are in. So that is so they don't get hung up on anything, hopefully in the stalls or out in the pasture. There we go. Looks good, nice and coat. She likes her food even more. that's about it. Those are the basics for horses. Um, water, fresh water. We're very fortunate that we were able to find some of the Nelson frost free water. So it actually will heat up the water just a bit. So the warmer the water, the more your horse is going to drink, which is a wonderful thing in this kind of weather. It's hard to keep them hydrated. 20, access 24 seven to forage. They are ruminants. That's how they produce their heat. They need good quality feed. So our guys get their senior feed on top of round bales as well as occasionally alfalfa flakes or cubes. 
Um, but that's about all we do for the horses. Blankets, good feed, water, shelter, but you can't, can't lead a horse. You can only lead a horse to water, is that the same? <laughs> We can't make him come in. And my guy loves being outside. So he definitely needs a break. We talked about generators. Generators don't work if you don't have fuel. So that's another thing to make sure that you're stocked up on when cold weather, freezing temperatures are coming your way. We have a number of gas cans that will fill up, which all of these are full that you see here. And this is something you wanna do a week, you know, many days beforehand. You don't wanna wait until the event to do this because then everyone else is doing the same thing. Uh, or power goes out and the gas stations don't have power and you can't get the fuel when you need it. Or you get a lot of snow, ice, you can't get to the fuel. So definitely something, prepare ahead of time, have some gas cans full. We have this Vivor fuel tank uh, that we use. I think it holds 50 some gallons. Um, anyways, I can pick this up with a pallet forks, take it to our local gas station, fill it up and then unload it with pallet forks. Uh, has its own gas pump and everything. Uh, uses tractor clips that just clip to the battery of the tractor, truck, lawnmower, whatever you're filling up. And that powers the, the nozzle. And this has been a good way to really stock up on gas to make sure that I use this for diesel. And then I've got a number of just gas cans that I use for gas, uh, mainly because we just use more diesel here on the farm with uh, the machinery that we have. So it's good to have. Also it saves us a little bit of money and that you get off-road diesel and I can get a large quantity of it at one time. Uh, you don't have to pay the taxes on that uh, because you're not using it on the roads. We just use it for our tractors, gators, uh, lawnmower and stuff here on the farm. So uh, yeah, so just make sure you've got fuel to power those devices that you may need if it gets really cold, power outage and such. Well, that's about it for our video on the farm. Uh, Lexi has left to go help the girls with homeschooling. Um, we also homeschool our kids. So that's another thing we have to do daily and we kind of divide and conquer and it was time to get that done. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Again, I know if you're in Northern states and places where you get regular snow and cold, this probably isn't very helpful for you or, or entertaining but if you have tips on stuff that we could do when you get these cold temperatures some of the things that you guys are doing i'd love to hear them in the comments again i've learned a lot about what we do on youtube and love learning from you guys as well so uh good luck if you're in the mid-atlantic uh virginia north carolina those areas thank you for watching and again if you have questions leave a comment below like subscribe all that stuff and we'll catch you in the next one all right bye